Hi, hello, and welcome once again to this tutorial. Yesterday we spoke about the computer modules that are in automotive. Yesterday I was speaking about the repairs and what it takes to do it. We started off with this one. This is a one-sided board. As you can see, there's only components on one side. <clears throat> Called surface mount, technology, and through hole that we went over yesterday in our video. We had another board. A double-sided board as you can see we have components on both sides this is the PC board this is the actual computer board that you have the components the capacitors I explained everything yesterday I believe um, these are the chips that we're dealing with as I stressed yesterday the point the worst thing for these things are vibration when you drive a car you're driving over bumps 80 90 miles an hour the chips tend to come off and the, the lands, which are the connections, tend to break off. Now, let's look at another one. First, let's look at this one. This is without components. As you can see over here, these are where the components would fit. That's why it's called surface mount technology. Now, these pads over here are called the pads. This is where the chips make the connection i'll show you the chip what i'm referring to in a second the components are mounted over here see this is a capacitor for c this is another trolytic capacitor that i've been working over i've been working these boards over 30 years now the computer modules that are in your uh, uh, vehicle in the vehicle <clears throat> they have chips they have on both sides they have the components obviously this is where the components lay on and I'll explain a little further this is the other side of it now comes the problem let's look at a module with it the problem with this is as you can see I just stated a fact this has two sides one side called double side and two sides the top the bottom now <clears throat> There's a problem here. In between these, the top, the bottom, there are actually more layers in between. The thickness of this is determined by how many layers. So what I'm saying is the actual visual components you can see up here. The actual visual components you see on the other side. However, through these, between here and here, here and here, there are more layers. Those layers connect to the chips, 5 volt line, 3.3 volt line. That's what these chips use uh, nowadays, and even less than 3.3 volts. Ground plane, there are ground plane boards, a layer in, it. this can have about 10 layers in it, believe it or not, these type of boards. So what I'm actually trying to say is, this is think of it like a sandwich. These are two pieces of bread, in between, believe it or not, believe it or not, are more layers in between. Two pieces of bread and the meat is in between these two. You'll never know by, by looking at it. Believe me, I've been doing this, over, like I said, over 30 years repairing these boards. It's hard to imagine, but this is technology. In between, there are layers for the volts, for the volts, for the voltage layers, for ground layers. Now, let's look at a bigger board, and you'll, you'll understand the concept that I'm trying to understand even better. <clears throat> let's say this board over here. Like I explained yesterday, many, many resistors, many, many capacitors. Resistors are the black ones. They tend to open, not short. The chips that I was referring to, these could be different types of chips. These could be memory chips, processor chips, anything. The processor, the microprocessor is this one. You see this one with all these pads? And I'll show you in a second uh, so you understand. These are the pads. These are the pads. These are the pins making connection to these pads. These are the pads. The problem is vibration. In your instrument cluster also, the instrument cluster is the one that you see your gauges on the dashboard. Now, when I had the, the responsibility of repairing those, there are many chips also, and a microprocessor. A microprocessor is the big one, like I've just stated. This whole thing is not 
called a microprocessor. This is the module. This is the microprocessor. The biggest one is the microprocessor. The problem is these chips tend to come off for those clusters that you see and these are computer modules that you have in your vehicle from vibration. Heat is also impacts it, but vibration, this is a shock absorber to try to absorb the shock. And guess what? It cannot absorb the shock of that vehicle jumping up and down, up and down at 80 miles an hour. Let's look at the chip. This is not the exact size, but I think you'll, have, you'll, you'll understand what I'm referring to. These are all scrap boards, by the way. All scrap. They have broken lands in between them, and therefore they cannot be repaired. That's why I just had to scrap them. I'm not grounded. This is not a ground mat. But when you work on technology like this, you have to ground yourself. You have to ground the board on the, on, on, on the ground mat, on the bench. Otherwise, these chips will be destroyed. They have something called MOSFET technology, which are transistors that cannot take static discharge. Now, the microprocessor, believe it or not, this is a microprocessor. As you can see, look at these pins. Look how many pins, 200 pins or even more. This is the problem. On the clusters, these type of chips make contact. Let me show you. Like I said, this is a little smaller i can even handle it the board is scrap let's say over here and this is a scrap chip now as you can see it's smaller than the surface mount if it will be the right size each pin each pin when you when you put it over here, <clears throat> each pin, this is a pin, 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 on this side has to make contact, like I just said, with these. These are the pads that make the connection. These pins from vibration come up. They don't make the connection to these pads. So, as always, I had to reflow them, meaning I had to resolder them. But you have to resolder them so carefully. The precision here is like a hand of a surgeon. I am not, not joking about this when I do this. There's a difference between soldering this and soldering this. You cannot short both of these two pins. If these two pins become shorted, forget it. This whole thing is damaged. We're talking about $100, $200 of chips. Therefore, you have to be careful. You have to be professional. And only professionals should do this as myself. Now, these pins also, there are different types of chips on these surface mount computer boards on these surface mount <clears throat> um, instrument uh, clusters they tend these pins come up now that's one problem other problem this like i just said you see these lands that go land these make the connection these are instead of hard wires <clears throat> we make a connection from let's say this pin all the way to wherever it's connected to Wherever it's connected to, you see this hole over here? That means it's going to a layer underneath. You don't see where it's going here. Follow this one over here. See this? See this hole over here? That means it's a connection, and it's made a connection to a layer through here. Remember, there's multi-layers through here, like a sandwich. So, the problem being, when there is a break on the board itself, and I have to try to see where the connection is going to, <clears throat> sometimes the problem is in between the layers in between this one and the bottom one that i just showed you cannot do anything about that you have to scrap the board as many times as i have to to do to do that unfortunately but nothing this is technology now <clears throat> what i was saying before the break can be here where these pins pop up and hopefully I'll make a video. The video that I made yesterday about the uh, printed circuit board had pretty good views. I was very surprised about that. Very shocked, to be honest with you. I didn't know there was so much of an interest in this. But anyway, if you want to see me solder it and unsolder these components, and believe me, it's fascinating to, fascinating to do it and fascinating to observe it. I'll be more than glad to, if, if, if you want that, please leave it in the comments. I'll show you how to take these out, put these in. This also, these small components over here, no problem. As long as there's an interest in it <clears throat> and seeing these things. Now, <clears throat> these chips, 
They go around and around and around, all these making contact to these pins, all these pins over here. Like I said before, like I said before, this is just a scrap. This is just a sample. There are chips nowadays vertical. As you can see, this is horizontal. There are chips today that they stand up. In other words, this chip would stand up on its back like this. And I'll show you in a second. In other words, it would be standing up like this, making all the contacts like this. What does that do? You know what it does? It frees up all this space over here that we can put more components. And what does that do? That shrinks the boards. After all, you want a you want a cell phone that's smaller and smaller and smaller and that can do more, right? Well, for that purpose, we have to shrink the components. We have to use this instead of this laying down and taking all this room. That's a lot of room. We could put a lot of components there a lot of connections we stand it up vertical that's number one number two we can do something that we that there are technology we could put it on piggyback what does piggyback mean one on top of the other exactly we take one chip over here we make the pins over here we put another chip and we make another top on top of this one and those pins will have another row of pads out here in other words let's take this one again let's take this one again this is making contact with here there will be another chip on top of this with 200 pins it'll be making contact with the pads outside bigger than this that's called piggy bank this is writing piggy bank on this one why we want that we want to save as much space as we can so we can shrink that board that iphone has to be smaller and smaller that tv has to get smaller and smaller that computer on the board has to be smaller and smaller for the vehicle right we want more things to do like i said this is the microprocessor this is what we're talking about this module is not the module is not the microprocessor this is it and when i change it and when i do these things precision you have to be it's, like i said it's it's unbelievable but this is what it incorporates to do these type of work now i said vibration is the worst thing the worst enemy for these pc boards in in vehicle correct how do you test it and a short story when i was working on avionics which is airplanes the hardest part for the board these type of boards is when you know what when the airplane lands on impact when that airplane lands hits that ground that force that vibration hits and it's felt through these components that's the hardest time for this for these pc boards not when the plane goes up when it comes down Another one, when I was working for on military electronics, like these PC boards, when they try to create these boards for a, a backup a generator on a ship, well, there were many boards and many mechanical uh, uh, components involved, a big rack. They tested it for vibration on a ship. That weight, that the, it's called the vibration test. That's what I'm telling you, automotive, has to withstand vibration and nowhere can you put it i don't care if people say on other channels i've heard under the dashboard you cannot put a pcb board under a dashboard it will still vibrate wherever you put it it'll vibrate so anyway <clears throat> we use a vibration test that means a 500 pound weight would hit that generator backup generator for military for government so make sure on a ship that backup generator can get hit by a torpedo believe it or not no joke no joke it has to hit that generator that, that was that we designed tested and withstand that impact of a 500 pound uh, 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 to, uh torpedo or, or, or that to withstand on a ship needless to say many times it failed it came back scrap broken all over and the screws all out until finally we got it that's from experience i tell you vibration is the worst enemy for these boards don't believe what other people say about heat it's true it's heat but vibration now how do you test these things remember you've heard probably of a wiggle test a wiggle test is let's say there's a connector here you take you take the connector and you wiggle it 
that was good 25 years ago for through hole technology not good for this type of boards that has multi-layer boards inside it this could be nine ten layers in it that you won't see what you do is a couple of things that you can do you take the screwdriver you hit it on the back every single side i don't have a screwdriver but you hit it not on the components obviously on the side with it with a screwdriver hitting it number one number two if these if if something is broken in here meaning the land or the connection is broken you put pressure on the board like this why because if that break is here sometimes it's making contact sometimes it doesn't make contact by you putting pressure on that point again with a screwdriver or anything here here where there's no component those those lands those connections will open up when you put pressure on it here or here or here wherever like i said first hit the board hit the boards if there's a, a heat sink on it which pcms do have heat sink hit the, hit, hit the heat sink like this it sounds foolish but you'll you'll see on the components you'll see that they when they vibrate they'll come off especially very very small ones we're talking about the miniature miniature ones these small resistors will come off that's how so many problems this is what i deal with every day almost but again i think this was informative i hope it was you've seen something that you've never seen before remember when you plug something in make sure it's tight make sure it's plugged in all the way but wiggling it will not tell you out of all these layers on this surface mount technology that there might be a break here by you wiggling this this uh connector doesn't mean that this break over here will make contact and not make contact that's that doesn't make sense okay 25 years ago i said like i said so you can drive for for miles and then give it to the customer. The customer, after after five minutes driving, will say, hey, you know what? I lost communication with the PCM or the ECM. You know why? Because you didn't diagnose correctly. You don't rely on wiggling a connector. This is what's going on in these type of boards. This is what's going on. Okay? That's what I'm trying to teach over here. This is what's going on at these boards. These come off these small resistors this is a capacitor this is a resistor they're even smaller than this they make them therefore they come off they don't make a connection again you have to put pressure on the board to see if anyone opens up it's tough and this is technology but what i'm telling you is from experience you will not see this on any channel on any automotive technician i guarantee you this this explain if you want me to show you how to change these with let it solder or unlet it solder no problem but uh, uh, if there's an interest in it if there's views uh, like i said i was satisfied yesterday really with the views that i got for the control module actually seeing it Really, really, um, I think you'll be amazed about this. So anyway, please, my channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. My other channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Please, if you like this, please give a like. And if you found it interesting or fascinating or whatever, and you learned something that you didn't know, know before, please give me a like or a comment. And you know, I always answer the comments. Thank you.